Not long ago, in a galaxy not too far away, shaped strangely like my garage. Adventures in Engine Nerding. I have lots of ideas for my projects that often require making parts. Making parts can be expensive, but I have a mechanical engineering friend with a machine shop who's made me really good parts in the past on his big Haas CNC machine. Lately, however, his enthusiasm for my projects has wafted away like flatulence on a windy day. Maybe it was because he was working for free. I offered to pay him, but he was still too busy. Maybe he thinks my ideas are dumb. Probably. Anyway, it prompted me to go out and buy a 3D printer and a desktop CNC machine. So, thanks Mark for helping me make parts in the past and for pushing me to become self-sufficient. I'm not a mechanical engineer and I have no machining experience. My mechanical engineering friend with the machine shop will vehemently confirm this. Therefore, everything in this process that I'm going to show you was done fairly slowly to make it as close to right as possible. But I'll still show you all the mistakes I made along the way, so hopefully you can avoid them. I bought a Genmitsu Prover XL 4030 with an offline controller directly from their website. I paid full retail price, and this is not a review or an endorsement of that product. This is part one of this CNC video series. I'm going to show you the process of building the CNC machine. When you pull this thing out of the box, it's uh, in two assemblies. There's an upper and a lower assembly. And first thing you do is set up the lower assembly and then connect the motors to it and then connect the upper assembly to the lower assembly and, and connect the motors to that and then put the wiring harness all together on it and then hook that up to the controller. It's kind of important to read the directions in this. It's They're pretty well laid out. Um, normally it's against my principles, but in this case I, I'd say go ahead and go for it. Read the instructions. The motor couplings have a clamp screw and a set screw on each end of the coupling. And you connect up the coupling to the, uh, this drive screw first and then put the motor in place and then connect it to the motor shaft. And I found that setting the clamp screw first on both ends and then doing the set screw next uh, seemed to work pretty well. I oriented my motors so that the wiring was pointing inward on the machine so that um, the wiring harness would be not sticking out the sides of the machine. Also, I pointed the open end of the motor standoff. I pointed that inward also. There's a knob on the end of the motors that you can use to spin the, um, the lead screws and see if everything moves easily. If it doesn't, if there's a binding point, that means you probably didn't get your um, mechanical things lined up properly and you need to loosen everything up and, and uh, retighten.
I'm not sure if the instructions covered this, but I made sure that the two sides of the Y axis were the same distance from the motor mount. That way, when I went to put on the uh, upper upper portion, it was already set up to line up properly and wouldn't end up crooked. Nah, uh, uh. Just because something is worth doing once doesn't mean it's worth doing twice. I did not orient my wiring harness properly in the holder and had to take it all back apart and redo it. The wiring harness connectors are well labeled and color coded, so it's pretty easy to put everything together in the right way. All the lengths are set up properly, um, so it just works out. Don't forget to set the controller for either 110 or 220 volts depending on your wall power. My Z-probe wires weren't snugged into the connectors, so I had to connect them. I'm not sure that the orientation matters or the, you know, the polarity because it uses a fairly low voltage signal. So I just did it one way and it seems to work. I got an offline controller so I don't have to have a PC connected to the machine to run it. It's not required.
the machine hung off of my 24 inch workbench in either orientation. So I did some measuring and figured out that a 26 and a half inch long piece of wood would give me support so it could stick out over the edge of the table and basically be level. The assembly probably took me about two hours. I think I probably could have done it faster, but I took my time and I filmed it. You're welcome. I tested this with compressed cardboard using the same part that I had used for my 3D print video. My next video is going to be using FreeCAD and how to output the CNC file that the machine can then use to make the part. I'll also make a video about how to set up and run the machine and some accessories that'll help with that. Hope you found this video useful. Check back for more. Thanks.